Monster Energy, the official energy drink of USC. Unleash the beast. Sean almost took the show over there. Oh, I was ready. I, I've been dreaming of that time. I've been dreaming awesome. of that moment forever. Unleash the Jordan's beast. Jordan's down. Cody's My microphone. <laughs> Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, Max Brown, Keely Yor. Welcome Hello. to the football roundtable for this week. And we finally have some football to talk about. And to be quite honest, watching the game made me realize how little we knew about this team going in. There were really? people out there that I had no idea were going to play. And sure enough, Quentin Joyner is the third running back on this team. Didn't know that. Uh, you know, Elijah Hughes was out yeah. there quick. Yeah. In your defense. Wasn't sure who that was. So There was so much rotation. So much so that I, it was, I a lot. was not expecting. I don't think we even saw that much rotation in practice at times. I was amazed by what we were seeing. I was amazed that Alani Noah got the start. Alani Noah started, guys. Oh, sweet. Especially because, like, <laughs> the second drive, they switched guys out. And I, you would have expected the true freshman to be on the second drive. But no, he got the oh. start with uh, Gino Canones. I was just super surprised, especially inside linebacker. You start with Mason Cobb, Tackett Curtis, and you go Mason Cobb, Eric Gentry. It was just this whole flux of things. And so it's fascinating watching that that tape. And you're seeing guys that started last year that were not the first guy to run out with their units. Gentry which, as yeah. an example, yep. Yep, and I think that's telling not only to the this culture that's being built here of you need to earn your spot in practice, but also, again, to this depth and a reason why our head coach was grinning ear to ear walking into this room, the depth that, that the I think, roster has. I mean, last Last year was such a, a different year is when you brought all these guys in and the chemistry had to be right and they had to turn around quick. So it was like, we need to find our guys now and we need to put them in there and we need to get them battle tested and game tested and we need to go. And this year it feels so much different with that. All right, we got some guys and we, let's just make this a competition. Who's going to rise? It sounds like when you listen to Lincoln, who's going to rise to the top? Who's going to take these spots? And that's what you want as a, as a football team, as a coach. That's how you get that excellent play, I think, out there. He also preempted one of my questions to him, which was that balance between – hey, are some of the mistakes happening because you're playing so many guys? And he full-on yeah. basically admitted that. And he's like, you know what? I don't care. This is a long season, and if you guys want to nitpick on the opening game, yeah. we took valuable information out of that, and we're focused on how this team's going to perform over 12 games, not on w winning the media over in week zero. And I, and I think that that played out on the field. I, I think in a lot of times it looked like an offensive line that – didn't have a ton of continuity. It looked like a defense where guys hadn't played together a ton. And, and you know, you're going to get some penalties and some breakdowns when that happens. Yeah, they definitely had respect for San Jose State, but it also felt like it was fall camp scrimmage number three in some aspects just because they still had position battles battling out live at the Coliseum during game one. So it was fascinating to see not only that happen, but to your point, Jordan, how open he was just a couple of minutes ago being like, yeah, we were doing that for a purpose and yep. for the long run. And he you mentioned last year the great teams go deep into the season and how do you go deep into the season you have a deep roster and so clearly they're trying to to iron that out right now it'll be interesting to see because of the way the schedule plays out this year how much that's a factor in the way they approach this roster shuffling with having a buy in that week three four four slot you always see it in the nfl of hey we're going to get to the buy and then maybe draw a line in the sand with your with your depth chart and whatnot it'd be interesting to see if they do that and a backloaded schedule where yeah. your, your best opponents are at the end of the year if, if, they, had, that if they had utah schedule utah opens Can't with do florida that. then goes yeah. to baylor no. I don't think I don't think that they're having that conversation. I, I think agree. that they're just finding, hey, we got to find our best fifteen guys on offense and best fifteen on defense, and let's rock. But they're clearly taking advantage of that luxury a little bit, and just sort of the swagger and confidence of, oh, the offense wasn't perfect; it only hung fifty six up. I mean, you know, <laughs> when you've got that in your back pocket, it just felt like Caleb wasn't even unleashed on Saturday. Yeah, you know, I th it was great to see, I think, Zachariah Branch. I think that was awesome to see. You, you heard about him for so long and how what kind of special player he is. And he, on the first play of the game, he's getting the first touch, and you're like, oh, hey, this guy's real. He can. He, no one's tackling him. Uh, so that's that's fun to watch. You've seen the young guys play out there, and all the expectations that I think you draw up in your head, like you said, Jordan, you drop in your head before you're going in, who's going to play, how's it going to roll out, and then it's totally different. You're like, holy smokes, this is uh, something else you have to wrap your brain around. So it's, it's, it's always fun to get it going, and that's why I don't take anything into preseason hype or thinking about players every every year is a new team and I think this is a, even as coach Mc this is this is you know a totally new team than it was last year concern level on defense obviously is high for the fans uh where is it where is it for you guys definitely not as high as Twitter I'll say that and I don't think anything is ever yeah. as as reactionary as Twitter for me but I I 
like I said, all preseason, preseason, the front seven looks completely different. And and like Lincoln said, they're actually getting pushed now. Like it's not just one guy contributing. So that to me was was not a concern at all. Corner, I'm a little, I'm curious how that battle's going to play out. They're a lot younger, and I, I was, I literally was going to say this on the broadcast, and then that's when Branch took the kickback, and I, I remember <laughs> that I never finished that point. But now seeing it. Because Christian Roland Wallace isn't just like locked in as a starter, now you're talking about Damani Jackson, who's basically a freshman, mm-hmm. uh, Jacoby Covington, who's very young, Sierra, who's very young. They're young at mm-hmm. corner. They're, they're, they're pretty young across the board. I'm, I'm surprised that, that Christian Roland Wallace didn't really take one of those jobs. He had a nice play late in the game, so maybe, maybe he'll get more looks or maybe they'll just count on the development of some of these guys, that spot. Yeah, my concern level, I'd say, is – just moderate and unchanged after like where I was at before the game. I think this, some of those same concerns exist. I'm interested to see what they do scheme-wise moving forward, where if those mistakes are happening because you're trying to be unique and creative and add an extra blitz package in there, with a deeper roster, do you scale back the amount you have in that defensive depth chart or defensive playbook to try to limit those mistakes? Just fascinating to see how that comes out. Maybe guys play faster as a result. Like that, That's what I'm looking for in your, your, your week two and three. I think it speaks to the importance of the front seven. I think this front seven is going to be the leaders on this team. They should be, you know, with Mason Cobb and, and, the, and the interior line. They think they have. I think I, I like the tackling. I thought the tackling seemed uh, more um, concrete. It seemed like when the guy was one-on-one, I didn't see as many missed tackles. Um, I saw a lot of things that looked good. And and some things, some Emmys. I mean, Emmys are going to happen in the first game, especially with some young guys out You're there. You're really but, into saying Emmys today. Can you tell uh, – <laughs> other people what that means mental mental errors i'm sorry mental sorry. Matt, mental errors just tr- just trying to help the audience yeah, i was yeah. sure everyone knew what it meant yeah, yeah I was like, I was that's like, not you like that guy yeah. you like that guy in all my meetings that just loves the acronyms and i'm sitting there going <laughs> i have no idea what you guys are talking about <laughs> uh, yeah a couple mental errors so i mean first game of the year um it, it, it's got to get better uh from a standpoint i think they fit, it faced a, a, a good quarterback in the cordero but uh it's going to get tougher uh, from that position so they got to get ready what are you looking for uh, forward to on, on Saturday? Zachariah Branch part two. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Is that an easy answer? <laughs> it got to a point in that game where I was just like, yeah, you sort of forgot about Caleb for a second. And I was like, well, the coolest guy out here right now is Warren number one. I just want to see him touch the ball. I mean, the fact that Caleb had four touchdowns, four yeah. passes, and you're yeah. just like, oh, quiet day for Caleb, yeah. like shows the star power. And I don't know if you guys heard it, but there was, I think like towards the end of the game, Zachariah had a, a chance to break free again. And just the rabid screams from the yeah. Coliseum, they wanted it so badly. And like, that's when you know a guy is a star player when everyone in the stands wants him to make that big play. It, this could get fun quickly, too, because with Zachariah Branch's skill set of being like a slot receiver and some of the RPO stuff they're doing, Lincoln could get creative in a hurry, and it could be it could be fun to watch. I'm intrigued at the former quarterback in me, at just how the offensive line shakes out. It's not sustainable to have five different units, and I would imagine Lincoln's going to try to trim that down as we get uh, – I mean, Stanford's the week after next, and it's yeah. conference play, so that's where I'm keeping my eye on. There just, is a bye after the Stanford game, though. And sometimes, and Stanford yeah. is going to be the worst Stanford team we've seen in a little while. So, I think you got to develop a, a defense. Somebody's got to stand up as the defensive leader, the star of that show. You need your Thule, you need your uh, Sua Cravens. Go down the list of the star, the Troy Polamalu. Someone's got to pop out to be the playmaker. If everyone's doing their job, someone's got to pop off the film. That's got to be someone out there. Well, I was showing Sua some love. I knew that was coming. Make, <laughs> just trying to make sure he's nice to you on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, he picks all winners. I don't Max, know. Guys, he was good. out there just. Oh, I, he I, was saw, the group text. Oh, I saw the group text. Oh my god, I saw the group text. <laughs> Cody was catching strays left and right in that show. Okay, but better, when you get yourself you posted it to Instagram too. Better show up wearing armor to the Trojan tailgate show <laughs> on Saturday. No hurt feelings. Fight on Trojans and fly on with ONT. Ontario International Airport is a proud sponsor of our USC Trojans. Visit SoCalSoEasy.com to book your journey through ONT today. Trojans Live is also sponsored by Pachanga Resort Casino, proud partner of USC football. Our over-under final segment is next. One final segment of Trojans Live on a game week Monday, week one for the world, game two for the Trojans. Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, Max Brown, Keely York. It's been our pleasure uh, taking you through it tonight. Interesting to break it down uh, with the coach, who's always a great interview. And, uh, you know, you, you make it this far, you get a treat. And the treat is the over-under. Is everyone ready? Yes. The over-under is presented by Pachanga Resort Casino, proud partner of USC Athletics. Okay, guys. Over under 
three and a half return touchdowns for young Zachariah Branch this season. Now, he's had one already. So he would just need to have how many more, Sean? Three more. Three more to take the over. Very good. And the reason I got that number four, four is is how many Adoree had in his final season at USC. Adoree had two punt, two kick. Adoree is the record holder. Four punt returns for a touchdown is the career record for USC. So return touchdowns are hard to come by. Yeah, I'm going to go under because I, st- uh, you know, they, you put that on film a couple times. I don't think he's going to get a lot of kicks. They just stop. They Sorry just stop for being a downer. <laughs> Sorry for being a downer. <laughs> I'm going to go over because I think if you don't kick to him, well, then you give Caleb Williams advantageous field position, pick your battle, Heisman Trophy winner, true freshman. I think he's going to get opportunities more so than if his quarterback wasn't the Heisman Trophy winner. He actually used logic. I was just going to say over just to be fun. So yeah. Let's go. I want to see together. it. But, I mean, Sean's point think, makes sense. What do you think, Jordan? I mean, I do think it's a, uh, I, his youth makes me believe in the over. Because I don't think he comes in uh, with enough of a rep that you're just going to go. Teams are oh. still going to be like, yes. okay, we'll give him a try. Yeah, mm-hmm. I do think he's going to get some touches. Yeah, that happens two times, three times. Then you start thinking, uh, yeah. No more okay, kicks. but then you have like a a, a a fluke happen as well, and that adds to the total. Did Adori get that with the pre kickoff rule change? No, no, I? it was the you the, you were still getting to the twenty five. Okay, yeah, okay. He just oh, – Dory always liked to, to run it back. Yeah, he was screwed. He, wasn't, doing he was not into yeah. fair catching. Uh, and, you know, Notre Dame kicked to him as a junior, so – He took some know. hits, too. <laughs> yeah, he did early on. Yeah. He did. He was happy to do it. But he, I, I always said he's a better returner than Reggie. So I always thought Dory is the best returner I've seen at USC. Uh, Zachariah coming maybe for that throne. A pretty impressive debut. Trojans Live is a production of USC Sports Properties and Playfly Sports. Our executive producer is Drew DeHart, producer Rick Cutler. Ben Conroy in the seat tonight. Thanks so much. Herman Aguilera back at the studio. Thanks to all our crew here. Uh, follow us all season. Uh, jump in the chat on YouTube. We love talking to you. And uh, join us for the Trojan Tailgate Show on Saturday. Until then, for Sean, Max, Keeley, I'm Jordan. Fight on. 